international travel is definitely not for sissies. I'm going to take you guys through my experience going from South Africa. Starting with Timmy. Timmy trembling. He knows what's coming. He knows packing bags, what that means. Definitely wasn't very happy to to uh, see me go. And he apparently hasn't been coping very well. But uh, he's going to have to become a, a big dog. A big boy. Anyway, I'm missing him. And uh, do, do sort of chat to him on the phone he does hear my voice anyway that's the uh local airport it's a little bit of a drive to get there and then uh that was my boarding time and uh i don't know if you can see how tired i actually look in that picture i actually did a last murder video just before i boarded like literally minutes before and so uh can you see those there's uh i think it's ground squirrels playing on the on the fringe of the airstrip about uh four of them four or five of them last look at south african wildlife <laughs> you can actually see it's still late summer uh, most of the trees are still green um, it's still just pretty warm as well uh, I was definitely overdressed um, and anticipating arriving in London in you know at night in the winter and then also New York so everyone around me was in t-shirts so this is taking off from the airport um, you can see it was actually quite a lovely day Lots of fluffy clouds. A baby crying in the uh, couple of seats in front. And I actually hadn't been in, in the air, I hadn't been in a plane, I think, in three years. So this actually felt quite magical. Um, I've flown a lot, but it definitely was quite a magical moment. No one wearing masks. I think in, in terms of the entire flight, talking about from South Africa to New York, I think I saw five masks. Um, that's 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 in terms of literally thousands of people in the transit lounge as well. So that's um, Central South Africa. You can see it's fairly flat. The bread basket of of the country, with the occasional hill here and there, we call them copies. A couple of grain silos there in the cool ground. You can see it's a pretty clear day. Look how far you can see to the horizon. And so, yeah, so it was um, flying from a regional airport to Johannesburg. And then I think it was a five hour layover and, and this is also quite a nice moment going through the clouds. You don't often see this amount of clouds where it's just enough to give you that sensation of floating. Often it's too many. You know, it's like a big mass of clouds or they're not, they're, they're too few. So this is really, an, in terms of photography, this was quite special. almost has a tropical feel to it. South Africa is a mostly dry country, uh, but it has been pretty wet, some unusual weather of late. I think this is the moment that we're actually passing through the cloud layer. So one moment you're below them and the next level with them and then above. It's very seldom that you get this kind of uh, just broken up enough that you can actually see through that. Anyway, this is OR Tambo Airport. There were three planes there that were just seem to be shuttered. Not sure what that's all about. 
And that was the plane that we were on, small little regional aircraft. This is inside OR Tambo, Janusburg International Airport. First time I'd ever been to the viewing deck. It's actually a small airport compared to giants like Heathrow and JFK. Some of our local airlines have kind of gone bankrupt, like uh, Kalula and Mango. So, um, yeah. So, this is something we do in South Africa. We wrap our bags because there's a lot of interfering with bags, people opening them. So, yeah, 100, 100 Rand, I think it was about $8 to wrap your bag in plastic. Just to avoid people unzipping and you know taking out a pair of shoes or whatever. And so I think it was about a five-hour layover, um, and uh, actually had quite a nice chat with a app developer who was sort of working in London and based in the UK, but. A South African. We had quite an interesting chat uh, while waiting to board. I was astonished how many people were waiting to board this aircraft. It was like just huge amounts. I think maybe 700 people, and it took ages to board. Um, felt like a whole village was just getting onto this one aircraft. There's two decks: a upper deck, a lower deck. I was on the upper deck sat next to a really interesting uh, British guy who's a printer, a large format printer who travels all over the world. Um, it's really a nice... Those of you joining from our One World Alliance partners, I actually watched a fantastic movie with Rafe Ray Fiennes. And it must remain securely fastened whenever you are seated. Thank you very much. 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 Thank flying over the Sahara while I was actually watching a movie on that. Now, if you had to try and explain that to Magellan, I also flew right next to all, uh, right past all. This is in the UK. Uh, I had to catch a train and a bus to get to Terminal 3. There was a strike there, so it was definitely quite stressful. Uh, Heathrow is a huge airport. The, the bus took quite a while to get to the next terminal. This was at 5 o'clock in the morning in the UK. And then this was to be another five-hour layover that turned into six hours. And at this point, it was getting quite... I um, wasn't enjoying this part very much. It was a long wait here. And just after four hours, they only announced which terminal to go and wait at. As you can see, no, not a mask in sight. I wasn't wearing one either. And so they eventually they said um, gate 7 up from the And then there were some kids there who uh, the flight was overbooked by about six people. By the way, that person you saw in that at the end of that clip was the guy who ended up sitting right next to me. Also a really cool guy, Andrew. So that was the aircraft, a uh, fairly old, older model. You can see it's got no ailerons on the side. Also, so many people got onto that, that plane. I was so relieved to have <laughs> those um, kind of beach chairs. I had a little bit of a sleep on one of them uh, while waiting to board. Um, so that was a relief. First bit of sleep I'd had in uh, a long time. So this flight was delayed by 40 minutes, which made the made it a little bit uh, um, 
you know, I'd, I'd booked a taxi in New York, pre-booked and arranged the time. So I do let the driver know that I wasn't going to be there at the designated time. I wouldn't worry that that was going to cause a problem. I kind of did because they then allocated a new driver. So this was another eight hours here on the ground. I managed to get about three hours of sleep. First view this particular of America, I think. section of the trip. There was a view earlier, I'm not sure if that was a... This is, um, I think that's North America. I was sitting right by the wing, so you couldn't really see what was going on there. Pretty big wing as well. And so that is the New Jersey coastline, I believe. Manhattan is obviously part of an island. You can just see it to the left. So I landed in New York, JFK, it was around about half past one, between half past one and two. Beautiful day, absolutely beautiful day. Blue blue sky, sunny, glassy clear. And it's been like that for the past two, three days. So I, I seem to have brought the warm, clear weather of South Africa to because apparently it's been uh, not that great weather until the last couple of days. of the view um, and so it was really a long time before I actually got that view of the Manhattan skyline um, I thought you would see it it would be sort of sticking out very visible and uh, just took quite a long time to actually get a first view of Manhattan even while driving You might be able to make out an aircraft that is over there and it is, I think, just landing on a different part of the JFK, uh, as far as I know. I think it's yet the view uh, is the late that winter in America, <laughs> late summer in travel part was actually cool, it was nice you know, meeting some new places and that part was definitely good but the layovers were hell I must say that, that wasn't fun. Uh, oh by the way this JFK airport is huge. It must be one of the biggest airports in the world. By the way two people actually died at JFK airport I think the day after we landed, I think it was construction workers were in like a excavated area and, and something fell onto them. It was actually on the news MSNBC um, like the next day. enormous, enormous One of several that searched the uh, another one is the Guardia. Now that 
challenge was because I, um, I was using my phone and it wasn't really loading, trying to get a Wi Fi signal so that I could communicate with my driver over WhatsApp. And now another driver had been allocated to me, and so now the question was how were we going to, you know, get hold of each other? I was kind of expecting a guy to be standing there holding like a poster with my name on it or a placard. Instead, he was just sitting in his vehicle, kind of expecting me to find him. Um, and so, ultimately, he sent me a photo of the vehicle. I sent him a photo of myself. And, uh, yeah, as soon as I left the airport, I lost the Wi Fi signal. So, there was a bit of a chaotic moment going out, losing the signal. Um, and then going back in and not really know if he would even say I'm going to sit in my car and wait for you. I thought he was going to be coming to me. But I did eventually find the vehicle it was a black Mercedes. Um, I didn't really, I thought I was just ordering a taxi, but it ended up being a black uh, Mercedes. Funny enough, pretty rickety. The wheels were out of alignment, sort of vibrating. Quite a young kid driving, a Chinese kid, couldn't speak very good English, but but was quite a nice guy. This is us in the vehicle. I've actually got a, I'm on camera. Uh, okay. So you cannot go um, Why I cannot go And then uh, just an hour, an hour's drive from it's a nice JFK day, eh? to Beautiful uh, weather. Midtown Manhattan. This is us exiting the airport area. It's much warmer it's in my country. Um, beautiful day. <laughs> oh. Quite crisp, um, definitely quite a few but at least it's good weather. And it's South better Africa, weather than Cape not Town. Not ice cold, not, um, not frigid. I was surprised that the roads weren't in terribly good shape. I was quite surprised. Um, uh, Have you worked the night shift? No, no better. Did you work and, through and the night? No worse than South Africa's roads. You can see it's. In my country, we've also got Van Wake. We just say Fun Wake. And so this was the Slightly entry into South Africa. New York, and okay. I'll yeah, put up I've lived video, in South Korea uh, for a short while. New York by night. You can see there's some big holes in the road. Right? So you want to be driving around there in the SUV if you possibly can. That's a uh, view from the airport road I think it was called Van Wyck uh, but we would say Van Wyck and then yeah um, the destination was uh, Hell's Kitchen and that's where I am right now I'm actually awaiting a friend uh, some friends are coming over and we're going to go and look at Central Park so I'm going to be off but yeah International travel, the, the flying part isn't for sissies, but if you can just, you sort of got to be in a daydream about it. Uh, you are like a sheep being herded on your way, and that's how one's got to sort of approach it. Um, but yeah, not for the faint hearted. I hope you've enjoyed this episode from Team Peachtree. Keep weaving, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>